Today we have with us Robin Rice, who is the director of Angels in the Casa, an art show featuring the works of local artists showing angels in various forms. Welcome, Robin. Thank you so much. Nice to be here, Shelley. So we're excited that Angels in the Casa is going to be happening again later on in the year. But right now you're in the midst of a call for work or a call for entry. Why don't you start out by talking about how this Angels in the Casa idea came about? <laughs> Great question. Um, it's a very exciting journey that I'm on that started about three years ago or four years ago. On a personal note, I had a really powerful shift in my life. Um, and in that shift, so many tremendously serendipitous things occurred that I sort of made a joke at the time that there must be angels in the casa. Mm. And th this sort of became the beginning of my journey. And as an artist, I had also, during this shift, found an opening in my own life to start creating again. And what came out of me after a long absence of painting were these very sort of fun, whimsical character-driven angels. And everywhere I looked, it seemed like there was an inspiration to paint another angel, and it would never stop. And people would come over my house and say, what are you doing with all these angels? And I had a vision at the time that was very unclear. I wasn't really sure where it was leading me other than down an incredible path of inspiration and painting and visual. But I said at the time, I don't know, but somehow I see a show. I'm going to have an angel show. I just am. And... The journey continued and support began to happen and people were just sort of in supporting and inspired by what I was doing. And a tremendous inspirational event happened where one of my angels that I had painted was accepted into an art show in Laguna Beach. Um, and I'm a California girl. I'm from, I lived in California for many years. So it was a really wonderful experience and honor that one of the pieces that I had painted after such a long absence of painting got accepted into this wonderful show in Laguna Beach. And what was the piece that got accepted? Um, I call her Angel Del Sol. And she was an angel that, um, that, you know, had a blue sky behind her and lots of texture and design and color. And she was just really sort of representative of peace and calm. And she was accepted into this show. And I shipped her out and thought, well, what the heck? I'm going to go to Laguna for the weekend. And I did. And, and what was the show? The show was called Night of a Hundred Angels. And it was by a renowned artist, Patrick Whalen in Laguna, who was just phenomenal. And talk about his art. He's amazing. He is an illustrator. He's a teacher. He's had a gallery in Laguna for many, many years. He's a very beloved artist on the West Coast. Um, and, you know, pretty high profile. And this was his second show. And funny enough, when he started with his own vision of creating a show about angels was precisely at the same time that I was over here in Connecticut starting to paint angels. So the alignment was more than coincidental and just really, really serendipitous. So when I got there, it was an international show. There were pieces and people had traveled from all over to be part of this really intimate, supportive gathering. There was such an array of art. It was outstanding from simple forms to unbelievable pieces. And, um, and everybody was just really, really rejoicing. And I wasn't really sure if it was the artist community in, La in Laguna that was just so thoughtful and supportive and, and unconditional with each other or if it was the theme of the angels themselves that brought just a really true blend of such inspiring people and, you know, really, really spiritual people. So for me, participating in this show, just, um, it just confirmed my own vision. And I knew that I was supposed to be there for a reason that all of this little journey that I had been traveling down brought me to this show for a very good purpose. And as soon as I got off the plane and came back to Connecticut, I said, I need to create, this is what I'm supposed to do. And it sort of became a calling, like the angel painting started a journey and the event in Laguna, Laguna set me on a path. And talk about when you first discovered art coming out of you in your life, how you entered the art world. Well, I'd always, you know, like so many artists and so many creative minds and hearts, you know, I've always had different creative journeys in my life. Um, my art has come out in different forms throughout my life. And, and for many years, my art came out 
as a mother and raising my children and being involved passionately and, in, you know, in, in raising my own children and the creative pursuits that we would pursue together. And, um, you know, it, it, when you have a creative heart and mind and as an artist, it's a continuous journey and it evolves on so many different levels throughout. And there's seasons, there were certainly seasons in my life where I had a canvas and a paintbrush in my hand. And then there's other seasons in my life where it came out in other forms. And, you know, in the past three years with children sort of growing up and being more independent and, you know, job changes and different sort of paths that I've traveled, this has been just a tremendously um, wonderful time and opening where I could really, really put paint and, and you know, paintbrush to canvas and really sort of authentically pursue what was in my heart. And you talk about having a season where there was an absence of art, but then you came back to it and the angels started to appear. Yeah. How did that happen? It was very profound. Well, I had some personal change, changes in my life. And during the, that personal, you know, uh, shift, you know, there was some sadness attached and there was a little bit of loss. And then there was this opening. And when the opening occurred, it was, I had really taken some steps to kind of clear the path and create an opening, you know, letting go of a lot of things and um, changing where I live, went going from a house to a townhouse and just, you know, just a lot of changes that I said I need to kind of clear the deck, you know, open the space and see where this leads me. Now you're saying a whole lot there, but I can totally relate to what you're saying because I know something about not painting for many years and I too went through a shift in life and that clearing of the deck is what opened up the space in my life to begin painting. Talk yeah. about your clearing the deck so you could start to paint. What was that? Um, do you mean in the logistical form? Yeah, like or? how did you do it? Oh, well, I put my arms up in the air and, and stopped resisting. Primarily, number one, you know, sometimes when changes occur, occur in your life or if there's love loss or any of those things that demand attention, you can either resist or you can lift your arms up and just go with that flow. And that was the choice that I made at the time. And um, when I did that, things just started opening in just just the most positive way and amusing way. And, you know, that's, I sort of joked. And when I sat down for the first time after a few years of intentionally, of, of really not painting, and I sat down with a canvas and I was just really called to paint. Now, wow, you know, I don't have to do the, do the garden right now. I don't have to, you know, do this or that, that a typical house would demand of me. I was in this wonderful townhouse space and, um, and I just started painting. And, and when you say call to paint, what is your process to begin a, a painting? Oh, my process is um, imagination first. You know, I get a visual, and I get a visual that just really calls me. Like, I can't stop thinking about it. It just goes into my head. And it, it's, it's so much fun and um, inspiring to talk to different artists about their process. And what I've learned on this journey is that the first thing that I had to do was let go of my expectation of perfection. And that was a huge breakthrough for me because I have been so guilty for so long of comparing my art, comparing my talent, comparing my skill set to others that, you know, are just amazing or perfection or so powerful or so much further down the road than me. That was a huge emotional hurdle to, to, um, to jump over because I would be intimidated. I didn't want to show my work. You know, what am, I'm a novice compared to so-and-so. You Who know, went go, to this art school or started uh, with that, that artist? And when I went to Laguna and was surrounded by such powerful, incredible talent, I was so, ner you know, I was so humbled, first of all, that my piece would be part of this show because I thought, oh, I can't compare. And I realized you've been doing that your whole life. You have stopped yourself not completed a painting because you've compared your, your um, skill set to somebody else's. And so that was the big breakthrough. And all of a sudden I had the aha and I woke up and said, who cares? It doesn't matter. It's about being seen. It's about showing yourself all your bones, all of your scar tissue, all of your imperfection. It's about showing yourself and just be free with that. 
And that was the big breakthrough. And I just, I just started painting and it didn't matter to me that it wasn't perfect anymore. It didn't matter to me that my, you know, blending wasn't as terrific as somebody else's. It was, a, it was the essence of it. And it was about the process of it. And it was about the self-expression. I, I love what you just said, because I realize in what you're saying, it's similar to yoga. When you're in yoga, you're on the mat, you may not be able to do things the way other people do it, but it's not about a competition. It's about you just expressing or yeah. moving in your own way. Art is the same way. You just express your own way. It's not a competition against the other artists. It's just you being able to express the vision that came from inside of you. Absolutely. We're talking with Robin Rice, and she's preparing a show called Angels in the Casa. She's in the midst of a call for entry, and Angels in the Casa is going to be here at the 224. September 19th is the opening of the show. And if you're an artist in the area and you want to be a part of it, be sure to check in with Angels in the Casa on Facebook. We'll be back after the break. And welcome back. We're talking with Robin Rice, who is the director of Angels in the Casa, an art show featuring the works of artists from all around the greater Hartford area and beyond, featuring angels of all sorts. And Robin, you've been talking about your process of getting back into art. What has been your experience with artists who are expressing their image of angels? And what's the conversation like as you've been drawing together artists to work on these shows? It's just been awesome. It's awesome. You know, once you have that breakthrough and, and recognize that it's really about, you know, being vulnerable to your, to your um, emotions and being seen and just being naturally and authentically you, um, the world just so completely opens up. And the community of artists that I have engaged with and, and have, a, have had the honor um, to get to know over the past two or three years has, has just been so wonderful. And, you know, I've often said that, you know, the, the artist's heart and soul, um, and when you're just so tapped into your vulnerability and your authentic journey, um, when you talk to an artist about art, they just light up, you know, we all light up because our creative mind just starts flowing and we just have so much fun and it's so inspiring to kind of tap into, you know, those aspects of our heart and soul that love to express. And when you talk to an artist about an angel, it takes on a whole nother light. They just, their imagination goes wild. And I found it. So I, when I would meet different artists and go to different gatherings, you know, I would say, have you ever thought of, have you ever painted an angel? You ever thought of painting an angel? And so many had not. But yet when I posed the question, their eyes would light up. And you have to remember that, you know, the idea really of an, of an angel in many ways was created by an artist. You know, it's such an, a, a, a beautiful spiritual image that represents wholeness and goodness and just really pure love. No matter what your denomination is, no matter what your spiritual path or belief system is, when you think about an angel, it just fills you with love and comfort and peace. And when an artist thinks about an angel, it, it transcends into such a vision that, um, that it just lends itself to just incredible, incredible different pathways of creativity. I appreciate what you said, angels being something that have been created by artists because when we look at it from the context of the Bible, an angel is a messenger from God. And nowhere in the Bible does it say that they have wings and that they're chubby little babies right. or anything like that. This has really been the work of artists who it have really created has. these images. If you could go way, way, way back, if we could just travel back to the beginning of the time and really find out who actually started that, right. who came up with the vision. Someone took the inspirational message or interpretation or definition at the time of what an angel is, what an angel looks like, and they went to town with that. And then the next artist picked up on that and the next creative spirit and on goes the journey. And you go back a million years and creative souls have been painting and creating angels forever, ever. And talk about your first angels in the casa. My first angels in the casa, um, when I got back from Laguna, I scoped out Hartford and I landed at art space and I met Dal Brassier. And it was an inspiring meeting right from the get-go. As soon as I walked into the gallery, I knew that that was the location that was going to be the home. So I manifested it very early. 
I set the date very early without any other plans in place. The first plan was to find the home for it. And the first thought that came to my mind at that time when I knew that I was going to have this show is I thought, for one night only, what if angels descended on Hartford? Mm. And that's sort of where it began. And it was sort of like, you know, if you dream it, you will create it. And um, that's where it started. So I, I set a date with Dow and nailed down a time the following spring because, you know, it's nice to manifest things really early. And from the logistical point of view, I know in my own world, I'm so busy with work and children and life that I need to have a nice timeline to, you know, create some works of art. So I put the word out really early and, um, you know, one by one started um, connecting with different artists in the community and, and then myself participating in different events that were happening at art space and surrounding areas and just slowly gathered a community of artists that were just truly inspired to be part of the show. And not only were the artists truly inspired, but as the journey went on, which was about a six month prep to, um, to go from call to call to entry to the actual event, which was last May, um, people were contacting me and, um, connecting with me of how much it meant to them to be part of this show. Um, not only the artists being so inspired to be part of this show, but People contacting me saying, when are you going to have this show? I really need to come. And then I would hear the words of how healing this is for me to not only attend the show, but to create for the show. And I knew that I was really on to something. And I knew that this event had now transcended into not just the idea of creating art and enjoying our process and creating with the theme of angels, which are so inspiring, but I knew how powerfully healing it potentially could be. And it further solidified this path that I'm going down, that this is really a healing journey. This is really about healing and, um, and using the power of spirit and the symbolism of angels to inspire and to heal a community. And so you said something so powerful about the importance of using art to heal and inspire a community. Talk about the impact you think that art has on a community. What difference does it make when you have artists in a community? I know. That's the thing. I don't think that any communities in our world today could exist without our artist community. I think it's the heartbeat and it's the deep, soulful spirit of any community. If you take away art, you're taking away just the heart and the soul of wherever you find yourself. Because art, there are so many things that are so healing in our world. Um, But art measures at the top of the list because, as we spoke earlier, it demands vulnerability. It demands reaching inside of ourselves and pulling out, you know, our deepest, deepest emotions. Um, It demands us being raw and real with ourselves. It's a form of nonverbal language. And it's so powerful. And, you know, we have a beautiful artist community in Hartford, this wonderful little city that we have. And I really didn't know with my crazy life that I had in raising kids, I hadn't tapped in to the artist community. And I feel so honored. And what I love so much about the community in Hartford that is so creative, this creative heart and soul. In New England. In New England and New England. But how... um how just genuinely loving and accepting our community is and really how powerful it is. So it's, I feel like, you know, that being that my show and being part of all of this is really just sort of adding to the heartbeat of our city and adding to the, the healing that art in its own form has to offer. And truly the art community of Hartford is a community of love and embrace And it brings all kinds of people together and it really does bring the community together. So your idea of the angels in the casa, angels in the house is something that's expressing so much more than just an art show. It's a great way to bring people together. The art opening is going to be September 9th at the 224, 224, September 19th. at the 224, 224 Farmington Avenue. And if people are interested in showing and having their work as a part of this, 
The They can find the call to entry on Facebook, Angels in the Casa Art Show on Facebook.